Hi, I'm Sharad Kutin and welcome to Let's Talk, the show that tries to bring you the most important conversations in art, culture and ideas. And today I'm really happy to have with me uh, two individuals involved in the production of this book, Paper and Text, The Trials and Trade uh, of Malaysian Literature, William Tam and Fong Min Han, uh, are both here. Uh, who contribute in different ways, and uh, William contributed as the editor, and Menhan as uh, as an essay writer. Your essay was on what is Malaysian literature, but I'll get to you after I get to William. And I wanted to ask William, why did you think it was would be valuable to put together these essays that really look at the trade and and what's happening in Malaysia? Hmm. Um, I think I have to start by giving a little bit of context um, as to how the book uh, evolved in the first place. So this all started um, slightly over a year ago uh, during the first MCO. So, well, I, I mean, because we were all working from home at that point in time, uh, then it became a challenge for us, like figuring out uh, how, I mean, like how literature was supposed to keep moving on in this kind of environment because uh, before this, we because before this, the book trade itself, writer, and by extension, the writers, uh, would also would depend on uh, big name events such as again like the K, uh, like the KL International Book Fair, uh, and that sort of thing to really uh, move books along. Because the thing about uh, the the thing about literature is it doesn't exist as a transaction between the writer and the reader, even if that's how it's romanticized, even if it's how it looks like. Uh, I mean, it's how it's portrayed like in books, in film, different media, but in reality, there's this whole a deeper ecosystem uh, that, that builds up around it, an ecosystem of publishers, distributors, translators, and of course, the academics uh, uh, who, then look into, who, then look into, who then look into these uh, sorts of things. Um, so because, of the, because the MCO was really hampering the way, the, uh, again, like our usual work, so what I wanted to do was to uh, put together a collection to look at uh, the state of things uh, as they were. Uh, but this wouldn't necessarily be sort of like a very topical report on, hey, this is how we're doing right now during this point in time. But rather I wanted to have, uh, to take a deeper look at what exa how exactly these, uh, again, different parts of the ecosystem actually interacted with each other. and and. Uh, and how they influence the, how they influence in turn influence each other. Right, uh, William, you, you work here at Gerard Budai. We're, we're staging this conversation here at the bookstore. What exactly is your role at Gerard Budai? Ah, so at the moment, so at the moment, I'm the executive editor, uh, which is a bit of a, it's a bit of a hodgepodge because that basically means uh, doing whatever happens needs to be done at any point during the publications process. So they could um, include anything from, let's say, like a little bit of publicity uh, at some point uh, during, the, uh, during the process, as well as uh, the bulk of the editing that right. goes on. Right, and so this is also something that's kind of unique about Malaysian bookstores, because uh, often they don't just sell books, but they also uh, you know, are, are publishers themselves. I mean, and could you help us understand who you are? Um, Gerard Budai is a, is a well-known name in, you know, for uh, book lovers in the country. Um, what is it that you do, and, and how did you get involved in this? Um, well, um, thanks, Gerard. Um, I run Lit Books with my wife, and we started our bookshop. It's a retail bookshop about three and a half years ago. And unlike most other bookshops in Malaysia, we do not have a publishing arm. Um, we, Lit Books came about because my wife and I we're big fans of independent bookshops, and um, when we came back to, well, whenever we travel, we always make independent bookshops a, a stop. And when we came back, we were quite, um, we, we thought that this would be quite a lovely thing to do, especially since we both hated our jobs at the time. And so we took the plunge, and we, uh, we started Lit Books about three years ago. Right, okay, I want to ask you about this, because there is a certain romance. I, I think there's a, there's a generation who, uh, grew up um, with these romantic notions of starting the you know a bookstore themselves uh, uh, and so on and so forth but there's also this um, there's there's a real it, it's, it's almost like saying oh, I'm going to get onto this train wreck and we know it's going <laughs> to come because very few people make money in this trade it's such a difficult trade and you know there's silos linguistic silos and so on and so forth weren't you terrified by this dream of yours Absolutely. In fact, um, I think my wife spent a better part of two years trying to dissuade me from this. 
but um, <clears throat> she either recognized my stubbornness or I have no idea what, 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 why she finally gave in, but she said, okay, fine, go ahead and do it. And, um, and you're absolutely right. I mean, I was very well aware of the pitfalls of running a bookshop, and um, I'd planned to, I was ready to shut shop if things didn't work out in six months. Uh, thankfully, um, it, it seems to have to, seems to be working, and, and we're actually doing okay now. Okay, so you're both deeply involved in the ecosystem, as you call it, William, uh, of the book trade. You know, and and the, from from the writers to the bookstores to uh, the printers and so on and so forth. And there's a wonderful history here at Budaya and SIRD, uh, which we probably have to go into another day. So we want to return to this particular collection of essays. Um, so when I look through it, and Minhan, you contributed an essay on Malaysian mm -hmm. literature. Um, William, tell us a little bit about the other contributors and what, what's in the book itself. And so when somebody picks this up, uh, and it's part of your essential series, uh, what will they get? Okay, uh, so, uh, when, so, when, so when I started out um, ideating the book in the first place, then I wanted to cover as much uh, uh, ground as possible. So that's why we have essays on translation. In this case, there's um, a piece by Dr. Lalita Sinha on uh, the nuances of moving between um, the, Malay the Malay language and the English language, and in which she analyzes um, two particular texts. The first one is, well, first one would probably be a very obvious choice, so Salina by A. Samad Said, and the other one would be a much older text, uh, Sha'ir uh, Siti Zubaida Perang China, so that's a more so that's so again. It's the kind of hu the huge flowery, uh, extremely uh, very and again very beautiful original text, and how you preserve those kind of nuances uh, moving forward. Uh, then we had a piece by uh, Dr. Alicia. So her so her work was actually on um, uh, the Malay romance novel because I mean there's there's always this stereotype that um, Malay language publishing and book selling is dominated by. The romance novels. So what she wanted to do was to go deeper into um, the reasons as to why uh, this particular phenomenon took place and how it's shaped by again sort of like the larger social, cultural, social, cultural and political uh, situations that actually dictate uh, they actually dictate the reasons for this. So it's actually quite fascinating uh, for a relatively. Um, Underlooked, overlooked uh, area because I mean it's it always feels like a kind of like Mills and Boone kind of territory and it that doesn't seem worthy of critical attention for whatever that means but actually it does allow you to have a much deeper look into uh, the way things go. Um, besides that, we also have a look at um, uh, the, the publishing trade from the perspective of um, from a publisher up in Penang. So that's Rosalind Chua from Clarity. Uh, that was uh, so. This uh, so what she particularly is, in, is particularly interested in is uh, again like the interactions um, between the larger um, sort of like the larger uh, book publishing trade uh, beyond Malaysia. So again, like how virtually like hegemonic uh, publications, so like Penguin for example, like how they operate, on what scale do they operate, and uh, whether or not they, and whether or not Malaysian literature can really like fit. Uh, into uh, their overarching purpose. Uh, can what we, is what we do here, for lack of a better word, can it sell overseas and that kind of thing. But I mean that also brings up a lot of the, uh, again like the old ideas of, uh, well, neocolonialism in that sense, I suppose. So again, more complex, uh, deeper topics. And there's one more uh, essay, right? Language translation and mm. Chinese Malaysian Ah, uh, yes. That's, that one is one particularly interesting area. Um, it's a very broad topic, so I'll speak um, fairly briefly on that. So that's by uh, Shou Ying Sin, who's now based at the Australian National University. And her work was uh, based upon, uh, uh, and her essay was based upon uh, the struggles of, um, well, uh, the, well, of uh, writers writing in the Chinese language, but who saw, who saw themselves in this, sense, in this particular point in time as Malayans first. Because this would have been during like the whole uh, Malayan Spring period and what happened after, so like the May thirteenth, nineteen fifty four generation. So and also I guess if you've read uh, Han Su Yin's and the Rain Might Drink, so you have a rough I a rough idea of uh, the kind of atmosphere of this uh, particular point in time. So she so that's what she looked into. Okay, so that's a wonderful overview, um, Minhan. I mean, 
Why did you, as a book writer, there's so many questions that I'd say get thrown up here, including, you know, what will readers buy? You know, what will readers buy? And how do you shape a bookstore in order to, um, uh, to attract them, right? Um, but, but let's talk about your contribution to this book <coughs> first, and we can get into that later. Why did you decide to do this look at the meaning of, is that, would I be correct? The, what is Malaysian literature? How do you define, define a national literature, as it were? I, I think so. Um, I don't think it's quite as luminous as the other essays in this collection. But um, in the three and a half years that I've been a bookseller and in my interactions with readers, with writers, with distributors, um, this, 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 this phrase often gets thrown up. Uh, uh, Malaysian literature, and it can use to be both very complementarily or very pejoratively as well. Um, with writers, for example, especially the, well, the more, uh, the more accomplished ones, uh, they might say that this book is a good epitome, uh, a good example of Malaysian literature, or this book isn't um, Malaysian literature enough, or not Malaysian enough, not written for Malaysians, written for Malaysians. And I think I just usually go with it, and I say, okay, I think I agree with you. But then when a customer comes to my book and asks me for a book recommendation, I want something that really represents Malaysian literature or what really is representative of Malaysia, I often find myself at a loss. Um, of course, I mean, I'm a professional, so I can usually reach out for something and say, yeah, this is, this is Malaysia. It has everything you need in it. It's got Teh Tarek, it's got Roti Chanai, or it's got Malaysia, Chinese, India. Go for it. But upon further reflection, I began to realize that my grasp on what Malaysian literature is um, was extremely numinous. I, I, I'm not really sure what it means uh, for a piece of literature to, to qualify as Malaysian literature. Now, I don't want to deny the existence of Malaysia, of, of the, uh, I don't want to deny the existence of Malaysian literature, but I think it's, it's very problematic, especially the way that it's used. It's used as a political object to a certain extent, especially within the book trade itself. Um, we have writers who poo-poo other writers because they're not writing Malaysian literature. Uh, we have people who are selling these books because it is Malaysian literature or who refuse to sell it because it is not Malaysian literature. And so I decided to investigate or dig a bit deeper, at least from, uh, from a layman's perspective, as to what this Malaysian literature could be, what this beast could be. Um, and upon further reflection, I, I think I concluded that uh, I'm not really sure. Okay, okay, so you give that's a spoiler. Okay, we're gonna take a short break uh, and we'll be back with more on this wonderful little book, Paper and Text, and here at the Garab Budaya Bookstore in Pataling Jaya. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Let's Talk. I'm Sharad Kutin with me, William Tam and Fong Min Han. And we're talking about this book, Paper and Text, recently published by Garab Budaya. And we're here at the Garab Budaya bookstore in Pataling Jaya. Uh, we, we ended on a very interesting note because you said that you came to the conclusion you didn't really know what Malaysian literature is. And uh, I, I must say, Minghan, I, I actually um, am myself, uh, you know, uh, bewildered by this category because it is linguistically so mixed, and then regionally all, all these uh, also uh, variants, and even with Chinese literature, and I've just learned uh, over the last couple of years and working with the Georgetown Lit Fest uh, of Mahua literature, which is essentially Malaysian stories, but written in Mandarin, and that's such a fascinating stuff. And, and, m and many of the writers come from East Malaysia, and Sarawak in particular, uh, and w what that's meant for global diasporic Chinese writing. So the Malaysian category is really uh, a complex one. What do you hope, so when somebody picks up this book, right, and, and, um, and it might be almost like a specialist interest, and William, you can answer this later, you know, what do you hope they will get from that? Well, um, and, and just to add to the, uh, the confusion, I mean, let's not forget that I own an English bookstore, so all my books are written in English. And for most of our writers, for most Malaysian writers, writing in English is already at least one, um, what's that, one degree of separation away from who they are because that's not their mother tongue. So that adds to, uh, that adds to the mix. Now what I hope for people to get out of reading my essay is to, well, I, like it or not, I think that there does, 
there is a certain kind of um, snobbishness or there is a sort of attitude that comes along with uh, a reader who wants to read only pure Malaysian literature or if you're the sort of uh, if you're the sort of person who will measure qualitatively the, the value of a work based on whether it's Malaysian enough or not um, and and I think that that's to the detriment of Malaysian literature as a whole because I think that there are many wonderful Malaysian writers out there who are not writing in what I would co consider to be stereotypically within a Malaysian, lit uh, Malaysian context. Uh, they're writing about Matsales, oh my gosh. They're writing about uh, science fiction and fantasy that exists in a made-up world. There's no reference to uh, Asian spice, for example. Does or or Tetare exactly. or uh, uh, Yatose. Or, the, or they speak in perfect English rather than Manglish. See, but, but, but these writers, I think that they are as deserving of the accolade of Malaysian writer as much as anyone else. But because they don't write to that particular idea of what Malaysianness is, I think that they are dismissed out of hand by at least a certain segment of, of the readership. And I think that this is... I suppose if, if I were to take, uh, if I were to take this uh, up a notch, it's it's actually a bit dangerous because I think it's sort of a return to colonialism, but from the other direction, and and I think um, as a local Malaysian bookshop, I really do want to stock as wide a range of Malaysian writers as I possibly can. Right. So kind of return to a kind of nativism, uh, nationalism. Mm -hmm. Um, that hasn't necessarily been great for us intellectually, but okay, but there are lots of uh, provocative statements there. Um, but William, I, I want to ask you about, again, coming back to the purpose of this book, right? What kind of conversation do you want it to spark, or did you think it would spark, and with whom? Hmm. Okay, so this would be actually build on Minhan's answer just now. Um, I suppose the biggest conversation I would like to see out of it would be Again, like a broader understanding, a broader appreciation for Malaysian literature for what it is. Because, I mean, we, we can define it in very rigid terms. I mean, if we follow, let's say, like the national culture policies um, definition, then I mean, that bring, I, mean that after that, I mean it's also dependent on the language. So we have like uh, Malaysian literature that's officially literature written, written in a Malay language. And then we've got the, uh, well, sectional literature, so basically in other languages. I mean, it's all very artificial, but uh, I mean, to be honest, given that Malaysia is, uh, I mean, we're kind of like an, in many ways, we're an artificial nation ourselves. Well, well, I mean, we're civic territorial, set up along civic territorial lines, borrowed from a British model, which is basically like grafted onto uh, what, in, in, in the, again, like a, in a region where, I mean, all of this was all, uh, all brought in. So, I mean, the one thing we can do is, I suppose, embrace this the peculiarness of uh, the peculiarity of this entire region for what it is uh, taking into account um, the kind of voices that uh, come out from uh, a bit of this it's a bit of a mire right now because we've got like stuff there's all there's all this stuff in it basically so now the thing is how you construct something from all of that and the kind of stories uh, that can be told uh, in that respect right i mean it's very interesting i think the saleh bidjonid position which is to say english is a malaysian language right <laughs> and i in fact for me english is the first language and so you know it, to the extent that i do write i think i write my in my native tongue but uh, there have been so many successes uh, with Malaysian writers in recent years writing in English and writing about the local context. I'm thinking of Tash Ao or uh, Tan Tuan Ng, you know, and, uh, who's, and, movies, uh, and movies have been made of those books as well. And so um, there is, and I wonder if, you know, these moments excite Malaysians to write because there's this other thing about the need for not just to be a you know a bookstore to be a conduit for things coming from outside but uh, as Gurabudaya does is just constantly support the local system um, what do you want to see happen you know uh, in, Han in Malaysia that really could help the trade and the whole entire ecosystem um, well you're absolutely right. I mean, there are wonderful Malaysian authors who have made it big internationally. You mentioned Tash, you mentioned Tuan Eng, and they are both wonderful writers. We've had them in our shop, and whenever they come, our shop is just completely filled out. Uh, we've got we've got fans, we've got uh, aspiring writers who just want to talk, just want five minutes of their time to learn more about the trade, and I think that that's that's wonderful. Um, but of course, 
just to uh, on the on, on the other side of the fence is that there is also a certain segment of uh, the of, of of the Malaysian literati who who seem to think that this international success is actually um, a sort of a reinforcement of this notion of colonialism that you're that these writers or these writers Mal Malaysian writers who have made it big internationally have only made it big internationally because they're writing to the white audience. I know it's a very unfair and cynical accusation, but those accusations have been made. It is floating out there. Um, and I think I want, I want Malaysians to be, and, and the thing is that I have actually experienced or at least spoken with young Malaysian writers who want to stock their book at my shop. And they tell me that, look, is this book, and they'll ask me, uh, what do you think, Minhan? Is this book Malaysian enough? And it's like, I have no idea what that means. I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know what Malaysianness means. I, what I can tell you is that this is a wonderful story. It's well written. It's got effort put into it. Fine, I'm stalking it. So I think what, I'm, what I would like to see is a more openness when it comes to um, the Malaysian book trade. I would like to see writers be given the support and be given the recognition uh, universally regardless of what the particular nature of their story is or, or whether it fits that category or not. Uh, as William was saying, you know, we have that national culture policy which provides very specific definition of what a Malaysian book should be. I think that is absolutely ridiculous. The moment you, you, the moment you, you, you sort of pen in what literature is, I think you lose what literature can be. Uh, it's very interesting. We are, of course, you know, uh, now I think this year would be the 50th anniversary of the National Cultural Policy, isn't it? Uh, and uh, Swara, the magazine, um, I, you, you stock that because it's, it's really quality writing in Basa Malaysia. Um, they're going to be looking at this uh, topic as well. Uh, William, I mean, as somebody in the book trade, um, I, it's interesting that you've brought out things that maybe would float in a very limited circle, right, among academics, among people in the trade themselves, of which, I mean, there can't be more than a dozen of you. So um, um, trying to make this a broader conversation is very interesting. What, what's next for, for you in terms of this series, the Garab Buddha Essential series, and this kind of discourse? I mean, who, you know, and trying to excite people about thinking more deeply about something um, as marginal, it seems, as the book trade might be in Malaysia. Hmm. Honestly, this, this particular series is, is quite a bit of a fun project for us because it actually allows us to explore an incredible variety of topics because, well, admittedly, there's also the thing where, uh, well, thicker books are harder to sell. They're more expensive to produce and they're not exactly portable. So we thought, okay, perhaps like something on a smaller format would be a nice way to go. And also it allows, uh, it allows for a lot more latitude for a lot of writers who may not necessarily have the time to come up with something that's traditional book length because I mean I mean when it comes to again like an actual narrative when it comes to the discussion of ideas you shouldn't be bound by again like having to fit into a certain word a certain word count and that sort of thing because I mean I mean an idea expressed well doesn't necessarily need entire reams of paper just to uh, to get the message across uh, honestly uh, I, Tim Harper might disagree his <laughs> underground Asia I think uh, it's 600 <coughs> pages long I, I like half I like Harper's writings he's very good so I so that uh, yeah, uh, yes it, 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 yeah. with him it's worth it's, it's worth really the journey, worth the journey yes. uh, okay uh, Minan tell us I mean you know in the last minute or so that we have I, and I, I know we're in Grab Budai but you also have your own bookstore um, where would you like and you've already kind of said it, right? I mean, that people should have a much more expansive view of what Malaysian literature is. And ultimately, you know, you pick up a book because it's a, it's a, a good work, good ideas written well, right? That's the, the main, wherever it comes from in the world, right? Um, where next for you, you and, and, and your kind of efforts at uh, Lit Books? Well, I mean, um, I, I think, you know, Unlike Garag Budaya, who, who has established itself as this uh, leading icon of academic publishing and Malaysian publishing in, 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 the, in the country, uh, Lit Books is very much at its infancy. Um, we, we, we are a general bookstore. Uh, I, I, I think we've never made any claims to any particular uh, political affiliation or any sort of social cultural objectives per se. Um, I, I, this is going to sound terribly boring, but um, our immediate priority is survive the pandemic. 
um, that's basically it for now. Um, as for what's going to happen in the next few years to come, I think it really depends on um, on where circumstances take us. Um, too hard for us to say anything, uh, to foresee anything at the moment. Right. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen, for for being on the show. It's been wonderful talking to you, and I hope uh, we have many more of these conversations. And I look forward to to more of these little books. And you're right. You know, it's almost the size of a handphone. Mm -hmm. You could <laughs> carry around and read it. You don't yeah. have to read just mm -hmm. your handphone. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank again. you. Okay. Thanks, thanks for having us. Okay. I've been speaking to William Tam of Garab Budaya and Fong Minhan of Lit Books, and um, we're talking about this a little edition: paper and text. It's all about the trials and the trade of uh, Malaysian literature and maybe a bit about the tribulations too. Uh, that's all we have for you on this edition of Let's Talk. I'm Shorad Kutin, only for Astro Wani. <laughs>